so this is uh, lecture 9 right okay so we've been looking at uh, we've been looking at uh, polynomials over a general field right fx okay so the set of polynomials polynomials with coefficients from from a field f okay so we've been looking at this uh, these polynomials and the last thing I did was uh, show you uh, show you an example of division how do you divide uh, a polynomial uh, a of x by b of x to get a quotient and a reminder and we saw how I think I gave an example in f5 right let's give an example in f5x yeah okay and just, just, just to show you that it carries over from your uh, familiar uh, real and uh, rational fields as well if you have a finite field also you could think of polynomials over that finite field. Okay. <coughs> All right. So let's keep uh, moving ahead with that. So the division. How did the division work? Let me once again remind you real quick. The division worked as follows. So if you were to divide a of x by b of x, you would get a quotient q of x and a reminder r of x. All of these cases will lie in f x as well, and the degree of r of x would be less than the degree of b of x okay so so you should be reminded of division with integers okay when you see this so you notice this polynomials over fx seem to be very similar like integer similar to integers right so you have two integers you can always divide one by the other and get a quotient and the and a reminder okay so you'll see the similarity is valid in more than one way okay so you can always think of polynomials in a similar way as you think of integers okay so as, at least as far as division is concerned okay many of the properties based on division carry over to polynomials as well okay so for instance you say if r of x is 0 what would you say if the reminder is 0 what do you say say b of x divides a of x okay so a shorthand for that is just this okay so basically a of x will then be a multiple of b of x right it will be some polynomial times uh, b of x okay b of x so, so the way to re read this is to say b of x divides a of x okay so that's the way you think about it. okay so so there's also there's also a notion of devices okay if you can find some polynomial b of x that divides a of x then b of x is supposed to be a divisor of a of x and based on that you can conclude whether or not devices exist for any polynomial okay so if you take any integer the first thing people are interested in may be interested in finding out is whether it's prime or not does it have any devices right so one of those things which you learn a lot I mean, can you factorize an integer so same way since division works one can also imagine factorizing a polynomial okay but it will be slightly different and because because see there's always so there's always a trivial factorization of an integer right any integer can be written as one times n Okay, and you have to rule that out you can't consider that as a proper factorization similarly for polynomials there will be more trivial factorizations for instance if you want to see an example okay suppose I take a polynomial say a of x uh, let's say x squared plus 2x plus 1 and, uh, and let's say it's in f5x okay suppose I say this okay suppose you want to think about factoring a of x okay so you want to write a of x as a product of two other polynomials okay there are very tri various tri trivial ways of doing it for instance i could write it as what one times this okay that's too trivial maybe one is not really something that you want but you can also write it in a different way i can write it as two times some other polynomial what will i put here i have to write it as two times yeah so you can divide this by two you can divide each coefficient by two or multiply each coefficient by 2 inverse. What's 2 inverse in F5? 3, right? So you multiply each coefficient by 3, you will get a polynomial there. So you would write 3x squared plus x plus 3, right? So is this a proper factorization? You have to rule out all these things. This is also trivial, okay? So this is also a trivial factorization, okay? So this is one thing I think it's true for any field, but I want to remind you that these factorizations are not considered factorizations okay 
So only what which is considered a non-trivial factorization. If you can write it as or see each of these things should be polynomials of degree at least 1 and degree less than the total degree of a of x. Okay, so that's the only then it's a non-trivial factorization, right? Each factor should have degree at least 1 and its degree of course will be less than the degree of a of x. Okay, so that's non-trivial. Okay, so can you find a non-trivial factorization for a of x here? x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, so maybe from your knowledge of uh, formulas for x plus 1 whole square, you might be able to write it. But remember, this is f5. Will anything change now? No. Won't change. You have to just reduce everything modulo 5. And I've, I've chosen numbers so that it's, you're comfortably safe within that limit. Okay, so you can see this will factor nicely as x plus 1 into x plus 1. Okay. Okay. So, so one thing you might have learned, finding linear factors is very easy. Okay, and for polynomials, finding linear factors is typically very easy. Okay, so why why is that true? So this is how you find linear factors. Finding linear factors of a of x is okay. So how do you do that? If you want, if you have to look at that, there is a way of there is a way of doing it. Suppose Okay, suppose suppose you have so suppose let me say a of x belongs to f x. Okay, so here's this result which will help you find linear factors. Okay, a of alpha equals zero. Okay, for some alpha and f, I'll take alpha and f. Okay, if and only if what? Based on the division algorithm, x minus alpha divides a of x. Okay, so a very familiar uh, root based uh, linear factor approach. You can usually easily prove it using the division algorithm, right? Right? So you put in uh, a of alpha there, you'll see r of alpha will also be 0. Okay? You just work out very, very easily. Okay? So you can show these things very in a very straightforward fashion. Okay? So you can use this result quickly to find linear factors. Okay? So even in, an, in a case where it may not be very obvious, the factorization may not be very obvious, right, the linear factorization, you can use this result to quickly find linear factors. So, we'll, I'll, I'll throw a few polynomials at you now and ask you to find, and ask you to try to factorize, and the first attempt at factorizing is to try to find linear factors, okay, finding more, I mean, higher degree factors is not, not as trivial as this, okay, so it can be a little bit more complicated, but linear factors can be very, very easily found, okay, so let's see a few examples to just drive home this point. Okay, so the first thing we'll see is the polynomial x squared plus 1 belonging to f2x. Okay, we'll see a very, very simple case. Okay, how do you find linear factors? Okay, you have to find roots for x squared plus 1 in, let's say in f2, okay, I'm, I'm only trying to factorize it in f2x, okay. So you want to find uh, factors for this in f2. Okay, so f2 contains what? Only two elements, 0 and 1. Okay, the roots can be either 0 or 1. Just substitute each of those values and see which one is the root. Okay, so is x equals 0 a root? Obviously not. Okay, x equals 1 would be a root. So you know what? x minus 1, but x minus 1 is the same as what? x plus 1 in f2 x. So x plus 1 has to divide x squared plus 1. Okay, so that that is one thing we have found. Okay, so you find that. Okay, so if there is one linear factor for x squared plus 1, what will be the other factor? It will also be a linear factor, right? In this case, it will actually also be x plus 1. In fact, x squared plus 1 will be x plus 1, the whole squared in f2x. Okay, it's a very strange factorization. So, so you should immediately be reminded of, you should, you should immediately convince yourself of one thing. Okay, the same polynomial. If I change the field, the factorization will change. Okay, so for instance, instead of f2x, if I had said this is qx, okay, will you have been able to factor it? No, in qx it doesn't factor. What about rx, the real number field rx? Even there it doesn't factor. Where will it factor? If you go to complex fields, you can factor this. Okay, so you can do that. So there's there is something there which is very interesting. So a polynomial that doesn't factor in a field 
can possibly factor in a larger field which contains this field. Okay, so that can happen. Uh, so you have this result in Q where you could, uh, you could factorize into at least quadratic elements. Yeah, so yeah. Does this hold in any field? No, it won't. Okay, so so that's so 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 that's something to watch out for. Okay, just to drive home the point, let's try to see x squared plus one the same polynomial, but I'll say now this is in f three x. So so first thing you should convince yourself is x squared plus one in f three x is a completely different polynomial from x squared plus one in f two x. Okay, the one is totally different. Okay, the one that you had in f two x, if you add one to one, what do you get? Zero in f three x, the one you have, if you add one to one, what do you get? Two. Okay, it's not zero. Okay, and you know it's definitely not the additive identity in f three. Okay, it's completely different. Okay, so these two polynomials, while I've written them down exactly the same way, they are the same only by looks. Okay, by behavior they are completely different, and you should not say these two are equal. Okay, remember that. Okay, but try to factor this. Let's see. Okay, you don't have any factors. Okay, so in fact, it's it is. Well, the correct term is it's irreducible in f3x. Okay, so if a polynomial has no factors, you say it is irreducible. Okay, so this factor is irreducible. This polynomial is irreducible in f3x. Okay, so a polynomial which has no factors is called irreducible, and uh, there is some distinction between irreducible and prime. In this case, we can say it is prime. Okay, so let's not beat the point too much, but technically there is a distinction between irreducible. Things and prime things and in, in theory, but we will we will just simply say it's irreducible. We just stick to irreducible. We won't say prime. Okay, we'll just simply say irreducible. That, that's a convenient thing. We can think of it as prime numbers if it's confusing you too much. Okay, this is our prime in that. Okay, so so you can you can keep looking at examples like this. It's uh, it's quite intriguing to see the same polynomial factor in different ways in different fields. Okay, so let's see one more example. Okay, I went from one to three. I think it's because I I did F3 here. I'm sorry about that. I'll come back to my third. Let's look at x squared plus x plus one. I want you to look at this in f2x and also x squared plus x plus one and f3x. Okay. Let's see. Try to do the factorization. In F2, it's irreducible, right? So you're able to quickly find it's irreducible. In F3, what happens? Yeah, it factors as x minus 1 times. See, so you have to be careful about minus in F3, right? Because minus 1 is not the same as plus 1. Okay. X plus. Is that also x minus 1? Yeah, so it's actually x minus 1 squared. Okay. Okay, so so remind yourself that okay, this is like another reminder that strange things can happen when you change the field. Okay, a polynomial that looks exactly the same is, will behave in a completely different. In one case it is irreducible, in another case it does. No, no, don't. Okay, so you can write it as x plus 2, but it's the same as x minus 1. It makes no difference. Okay, so the integers, when you see them modulo something, you can write one integer modulo m in any ways you want. Suppose you suppose you're looking at this modulo three, modulo three two is the same as minus one, it's the same as five, it's the same as eight, eight, right? I mean all these numbers are the same once you say modulo three. Okay, so I like writing it as x minus one squared. Okay, <laughs> it's not the same as anything else. Okay, so let's go to slightly more complicated examples. But now I'll just stick to f2x. Okay. I'll just stick to f2x. Okay, so let, let me start with x power 3. I'm sorry. I wanted to write x power 3 here for some reason. Okay, from now on we'll stick to f2x. When we can go to fpx, but it's more confusing. We'll just stick to f2x. Okay, but we have to be slightly more careful when you look at higher degree polynomials, right? 
So for cubic polynomials, you, if it is reducible, you will have a linear factor. Am I right or wrong? <coughs> you have to have a linear factor, right? You cannot escape a linear factor. If you have a factor of degree 2, what will be the other factor? It will be linear. Okay. So anyway, you should have a linear factor. Okay. Without having a linear factor, this will not this will not reduce. Okay. So it's enough if you check for roots. Okay. So you put in x equals 0, you don't get a root. x equals 1, you don't get a root. You can conclude this is irreducible. It's not a problem. Okay. So let's try something more. Something like say x power 4 plus x plus 1. Okay, so you can only say no linear factor now. You have to rule out degree 2 factors. I'm sorry. Yeah, suppose it factors into 2. You can write it as a of x into b of x. What can be the degrees of a of x and b of x? Yeah, so any one has to have one degree. You cannot have a linear factor. But this polynomial, it's not true. It could have two factors, both of degree 2. Okay, so you have to rule out degree 2 factors as well. Linear factors you can immediately rule out, right? You know immediately there is no linear factor. Okay, so you put x equals 0, you don't get anything, x equals 1, you don't get anything. It's okay, but for, for degree 2 factors, you have to do some more work. Okay, it turns out actually, it's enough if you eliminate irreducible factors of degree 2. Okay, right? So when you when you check for, check for whether a number is composite or not, integer is composite or not, what do you do? You only divide by primes. You don't have to divide by other composite numbers, right? If it's divisible by a composite number, obviously it's divisible by a prime also. So it's enough if you divide by irreducible polynomials. Okay? So you have to check for irreducible polynomials of degree 2. If you do that search, you'll see this guy is the only irreducible polynomial of degree 2 in F2x. Okay? Look at all other degree 2 polynomials. All of them will be reducible. Okay? If you want, you can take a minute and enumerate all the degree 2 polynomials of in f2x. How many degree 2 polynomials will you have in f2x? 8, right? 8? Am I right? Okay. Degree 2. And degree 2 means one of the coefficients is 1. Okay. The coefficient of x squared is 1. That's, that's, when, that's what I mean by degree 2. Degree less than or equal to 2 is 8. You're right. Okay. If we say degree equal to 2, how many? 4. Okay. That's correct. Okay. You can write down all the 4. And you'll see this is the only irreducible polynomial. Okay, all the others will have linear factors. Okay, it's very easy to show that. Okay, so it's enough if you check if x power 4 plus x plus 1 has x squared plus x plus 1 as a factor. Please check that. How will you check it? You have to divide, that's all. You have to use long division. There's no other way here. You can't, right? You have to divide x power 4 plus x plus 1 by x squared plus x plus 1 in where? Where, where, where should you divide that? In f2x. Okay, do that long division. And check if the remainder is 0. Sir, how do we get a knowledge about the irreducible polynomials? How do we know irreducible polynomials? Yeah, basically you have to list all the polynomials and check if it's irreducible or not. Yes, well, there are smarter ways and it's actually, okay, I'll, I'll comment about it as we go along. Yeah, but for now, for starters, you can say I list all the polynomials and check whether each is irreducible. Yeah, so it's it's not a factor, right? You'll have a non-zero reminder. So this, this will end up being irreducible. Okay, so you can do this checks if you want. Okay. So it turns out there are quite a few irreducible polynomials. Okay, It's not surprising. In, uh, like I said, there's an analogy between these polynomials and integers. right? These polynomials over a field behave very much like integers. And there are quite a few primes as well. right? Okay, How many primes are there roughly? There's some count, no? How do, they how do they grow in n? If you look at all the numbers from 0 to n, how many primes roughly can you expect for large n, log n? Right? So it's, that's the result. So log n is quite a large, I mean it grows with n. It doesn't, doesn't go off down to 0. right? So there are quite a few. So likewise here also, there are quite a few irreducible polynomials. So the typical way of finding irreducible polynomials, he asked a question is to randomly generate polynomials of a given degree okay, and keep checking, you will quickly find a irreducible polynomial. Okay, So it is not very difficult in practice. It turns out one can show some very nice results. For every m, 
in n okay positive integer m there is a there is at least one in fact typically more than one at least one irreducible polynomial of degree m in uh, i'll say fpx now this is what we need uh, p prime any p prime this is the result that we need now in fact you can generalize this a little bit and show any finite field also it will be true okay so so we know there is for every degree m in in every characteristic p okay in, in every fpx i'm sorry i haven't said anything about characteristic yet i'm sorry for that in fpx there will be at least one irreducible polynomial okay okay so that's the result we'll accept without proof okay if i have to prove it it's, it's quite unnecessary it's a tangent so we'll accept this without proof okay so that is just like we accept there are prime numbers we'll accept this is also true okay so this is uh, this is true okay any questions about irreducible polynomials okay they this will play a very important role in the construction so if there's something dis disturbing me disturbing you about this you should ask me right now is there any question okay all right good all right so we have seen enough facts i think about uh, polynomials and this is pretty much what you should need okay so i don't think we'll need uh, anything more so we'll let's try to jump into construction of finite fields okay so we'll do it uh, we'll do this in a very simple fashion and in many ways this the way i do it will not be very rigorous as well okay so if, if you're interested you should read books and uh, a good book very good book is algebra by michael arten a cheap edition is available would strongly suggest very strongly suggest that if you're interested in these things please buy this book for yourself and uh, go ahead and read it it's a very good book and if you want to really understand all the technical details you can look at it okay so i'll do it in a way which is It's simple, simple, and intuitive, and appeals to all. Okay, it's not a very rigorous, rigorous way. Okay, so first thing we'll see is we'll assume. Okay, so 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 far I've not shown you anything. The only finite fields we've seen so far are what? F P. Okay, so we've seen F P. P for P prime, and hopefully you are you are reasonably familiar with this. Okay, so one of the results uh, that that i showed for groups which will be very crucial later on also as we go along is order of an element okay so order of an element in a finite group what does it do it divides something what does it divide it divides the size of the group okay so if i take for instance fp fp star is what is a multiplicative group the multiplicative order of any element in fp okay will divide what p p minus 1 okay so be very careful if it has to divide p then you are very happy because very few things divide p okay <coughs> So let us divide p minus one. Okay, so just a reminder so that you don't forget that result. Okay, so now we will try to prove some properties assuming f q exists for some q. Okay, I have not said anything about existence of fields. I'll say suppose. No, I didn't say such things. <laughs> I said any two fields of the same size will be isomorphic. That is the result which we prove. I never said the size is only p. And I'll come to it. There is there is a close relationship between f p for a prime p and any field that you can possibly have. I'll come to it. There's a very close relationship, but it's not definitely not isomorphic. There are other fields than f p, fields other than f p. Okay. Suppose f q exists for some q. okay some very powerful results are possible for q okay just based on simple arguments you can show some really really powerful results for what q can be okay so one of those surprising results if you have, haven't seen it before it will be very surprising for you okay so suppose fq exists okay i don't know anything about fq i'm just saying fq exists okay what all should i define for defining fq i should define a set with q elements okay i should define i define it such that fq with an addition operator becomes a group okay And then I should also define it so that star. the fq star, which is the additive identity thrown away, should be a multiplicative group. 
okay i have not said anything about all those things okay i'm just saying it as i'll assume it exists okay okay i don't know about the elements of fq but i know two elements of fq should always be there what are the two elements that i know should be there the additive identity of the additive group fq and the multiplicative identity of the multiplicative group fq star should be there okay so 0 and 1 belong to fq i know these two will be there okay so one might start by saying what what if 0 equals 1 okay so if you multiplicate identity and additive identity are the same you don't get anything interesting okay so it's just everything is everything is uh, 0 okay you don't get anything okay so we'll obviously assume 0 and 1 are not the same okay so what's the only way of coming up with other elements okay i know there are operations there are plus and dot those two operations have not defined but they exist in this field if the field exists they have to be there using those operations can i create more elements of fq just using one zero and one? one plus one okay right you see that's that's just about the only way i can create the only way i can create more elements is if i add one to itself right if i do anything else i won't get new elements okay right so i could think of one plus one okay this will belong to fq Okay, remember I don't know what plus is. I'm just saying there should be a plus and I can always add one to itself and get another element in FQ. The nothing that stops me from repeating this. I can add one plus, one plus, one and I'll still be in FQ. Okay. Okay, so now I, since I can keep on doing it, I'll need a shortcut, shorthand. Okay, so instead of writing one plus one plus one n times, okay, what will be my shorthand? Okay, remember I'll write this simply as n okay i'll write this simply as n itself okay it's assumed that it's n times one okay or n n one added to itself n times it's what it's assumed to be okay n okay now i know q is finite okay so remember q is finite right okay so but this n is can keep on going right i can keep on adding and obviously since fq itself is finite since all these things have to belong to fq eventually what should happen yeah you should go to zero itself okay in fact it has to repeat but from that argument you can easily show that there will be a smallest n for which n will be equal to this zero the additive identity is zero. okay do you notice that okay so since since <coughs> since q is finite there exists smallest n belonging to n such that n equals 0 in what in fq okay okay this n that i defined in fq how did i define n i how did i define n in fq one added in fq i took the one and added to itself n times that's how I got the n in FQ. Okay, this n in natural numbers is little different, right? That's just a number. Okay, there will exist a smallest n such that n is zero in FQ. Okay, the next surprising result is, okay, this smallest n has to be prime. Has to be a prime number. Okay. 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 So how will you argue that we it has to be? This. Because uh, if there is n such that it is equal to zero, it's as if uh, the field is uh, f f n for some n, and then we showed it's a field only when n okay, is. Okay. That all those things need a lot of proofs. Okay. <laughs> we haven't come to that. Eventually, I'll show some isomorphism of something like that. But let's not let's not go to that. But why should? What's a simple argument for why? Exactly. See, so don't. Why are you going to FP now? I mean, there's no going to FP. There's no field. You know. I mean, just let's not jump into something else. Eventually, we'll get there. But the simple argument is: suppose n were not prime, I can write it as a times b, and even in F, FQ that will hold. Right? Okay. So how do you prove it? If n is not prime. Okay. If n is not prime, if n equals a b in n, then n will be a times b in fq as well okay why will that be true you can you have to write that and prove it by the distribution properties you can prove these things okay 
you can take the distribution property of the field you can take the distributive property of the field and you can show a times b will be n in fq okay it's very easy you remember how did i define a in fq what is a in fq 1 plus 1 plus 1, plus 1 a times what is b in fq 1 plus 1 plus 1 b times if you multiply those two will you get 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times you can use the distributive property of the field it's just one just keep on doing it you'll, you'll have same one added to itself n times so you'll get the n okay now if n is zero what have i shown a or b has to be zero in the field okay so then what will be violated n will not be the smallest entry anymore so obviously there should have been a smaller number okay so therefore n has to be prime okay and zero equals ab implies a is 0 or b is 0 and you get a contradiction okay so therefore n has to be prime okay so this prime number which is the smallest number for which 1 plus 1 plus 1 added that prime number number of times equals 0 in fq is called the characteristic of fq okay so this is the definition of characteristic smallest prime p for which p equals 0 in fq okay remember what is p in fq 1 plus 1 plus 1 added p times okay okay so remember this is a very powerful result okay so I never knew, I, I don't even know if FQ exists, okay. I only know, so if somebody tells me that FQ exists, then there has to be a characteristic for this FQ, which is P, right, it's a prime number, which is a prime number P, and that P will be 0 in FQ, or 1 added to itself P times will be 0 in FQ, okay. So what, what have I shown right now? So just based on this, I've shown 0, 1, 2, 3, all these till p minus 1 will be actually a subset of fq. This is what I've shown. Okay. For some p prime. Okay. p is prime. Okay. I will call this set as fp. Okay. Remember I have not shown that this is the field fp. Okay. I'm, just, I'm going to call this set as fp right now this is some subset of fq okay and all the operations among these elements are defined in fq in some field which i don't even know whether it exists or not okay but the only thing i know is it's got p elements and each of the elements are one added to itself that many times if i say two it's one added to itself twice if i say three it is one added to itself three times in fq okay of course since i've called it fq what am i going to show i'm going to show next that this set, this fp will be exactly the fp that we saw before okay it will be isomorphic technically but we'll simply take it as equality okay okay so that's the next result we'll see we'll see fp contained in fq is actually the finite field fp okay so how do you show these things how do you show that this set will be the same as the finite field fp you have to show yeah exactly you have to show every operation here will result in the exact same operation in in the original fp that you knew it has to right you take any two things and add what are you doing you're taking add one and adding to itself so it will be the same thing as the sum and why do you have to do modulo p where will the modulo p come because because p is zero in my fq i've shown that Okay, so modulo p will naturally come because p is 0. Whether you multiply or add, multiplication is also easy because then use the distributive property. Okay, so it's all just sums of 1s. So you, you can show a times b is same as a times b. Where will the modulo p come? Because p is 0 in fq. Okay, so the exact same thing will come. Okay, so you can write down the proof. This requires proof. Okay, so if, based on your familiarity with mathematics, it might be easy or difficult for you. But it's a very simple proof. There is no, there is no fancy concept here. Okay. So imagine what, what, what we have shown now. It's quite powerful. I've said FQ is some, some field. I don't know if it exists or not. But just because it exists, what should it contain? It should contain some FP. Okay, that's the only thing that we have shown so far. Okay, is that clear? Any questions? 
any thoughts on what is it that I've actually shown and what is it that I'm claiming? Well, it's okay. It's clear enough. Okay. Okay. So the next statement we'll show will be slightly yeah, more. A, B is zero in a field. You will have to still show A equal to zero and B equal to zero. You just assume that. Yeah. One of those two. See, because if one of them are non, non zero, suppose A is non zero, it will have an inverse, multiplicative inverse. So multiply both sides, you will get B to be zero. Okay. So any one has to be zero. But that can be shown. Okay, so there are some general names. Okay, the next result is even more interesting. Okay, so now any, so you have a bigger set FQ, right, which contains the field FP. Okay, and what can you do in FQ? You can you can add two elements of FQ, and it contains a field FP, and you can also multiply two elements of FQ. Okay, so naturally you will get addition of addition and scalar multiplication, and FQ will become a vector space over FQ. Over FP. Okay. So, I don't know if you're not familiar with abstract vector spaces, this might be a very surprising fact to you. But what is, how do you define a vector space? What's the definition of a vector space? It's a set of vectors over some scalar field. Okay. So, you need a scalar field and then you need a set. What what are the what are the what else do you need for a vector space? You need to be add you need to be able to add any two vectors and result in another vector. Can you do that in FQ? Can you add two elements of FQ and result in another element of FQ? Yeah, that's what the addition operator will give you. Okay. And now my base field is FP. Can I multiply an element of FP with an element of FQ? Yes. Yeah, you just use the multiplication operation that was defined in FQ. I can multiply, I'll still be in FQ. So both of those hold and FP is a field, I know it's a field. So FQ will have to be a vector space over FP. Sir, uh, can we tell that any field is a vector space over, over itself? Yeah. If you over take a field, field uh, over a subfield. Yeah, it will be. Right. So you notice the argument. Okay. So it's a slightly abstract argument, but basically, the way you argue is, if you have A and B belonging to FQ, A plus B belongs to FQ. That's my vector addition now. This is addition in in FQ, which I will call as vector addition. If you want, okay. What about multiplication? If you have A belonging to FP and B belonging to FQ, how can I do A A dot B? Yeah, it will also begin in FQ. This will be multiplication in in FQ, I will call it my scalar multiplication. Okay, I can happily do this. Okay, so FQ will have to be a vector space over FP. Okay, now what do I know about vector spaces? Once I come to vector spaces, I'm in very familiar domain. Okay, FQ is in fact finite. It's only got a finite number of elements. So it's very easy to see FQ will in fact be a finite dimensional vector space over FQ. FP. Okay, so that's the next step. So more is true. FQ will be a finite dimensional vector space over FP. Okay, what else is true? Suppose I say, suppose dimension is M. It has to be some finite number m. I'll say dimension is m. Okay. Now, what else do I know about vector spaces? What else do vector spaces have? How do I describe all the vectors in a vector space? Use a basis. Okay. So that implies now there exists a basis. Let me call it b1, b2. How many vectors will be there in the basis? Bm for fq over fp. What does it mean now? An arbitrary vector in FQ, let me call it alpha, I'm just sorry, x, x, I want to something else. Alpha and FQ can be written as alpha equals A1, B1 plus A2, B2. Where, where will all these guys belong? BA will belong to what? Basis. FQ. Okay, it's the basis, but there will be elements of FQ, right? 
They're all basis vectors are belong to the vector space, right? So they all belong to that. A2, B2 plus AM, BM. So where those bases, where do AA belong? FP. Okay. Okay, for every alpha and FQ, I can uniquely write it in this form. And it's also vice versa. For every set of AI that I come up with, I will have a un an element in FQ. So how many elements will there be in FQ? How many choices do I have for each AI? P power M. <laughs> so each AI can be an arbitrary element of FQ, FP, right? So that would be p possibilities i have m of them to choose so q has to be equal to p power m okay so i want you to step back and imagine the power of abstract mathematics at work okay so started with fq you don't even know if it exists or not okay you said somebody tells you fq exists with two pages of work you can come to the fact that this q has to be equal to power of a prime it cannot be 10 for instance okay okay so that's an amazing thing that we have shown okay so it's quite non trivial okay you should be surprised by it if you're not surprised okay <laughs> so just because somebody said a finite field exists for q you can show q has to be equal to p power m and the proof is very i mean it doesn't involve any magic right it's some very simple step by step argument there's nothing more to it i don't think i've really missed out on any important step in the proof i've shown pretty much everything okay so it's quite simple to see q will be p power m okay so now this analogy is is more powerful than just saying q just giving you an idea for what q can be okay what else have i done how did i go to the vector space what was my addition in the vector space <coughs> it's the exact same addition as in fq so what will be addition in fq it will be addition of vectors over fp so how do i add two vectors now Okay, addition in FQ. Suppose I ask you to add two vectors, alpha 1 and alpha 2 in FQ. If you have to add it, what will you do first? First, write it as a vector over FP in some basis. Okay, we'll choose some basis and write it over FP. Okay, so you write alpha 1 as A11 B1 plus A12 B2, so on till A1M BM. And then you write alpha 2 as A21 B1 a22 b2 plus a2m bm then what is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 it's very easy it's a simple vector addition a11 plus a21 why do i know how to add a11 and a21 both of them are in fp simply add mod p there's nothing more to do okay b1 plus so on till a1m plus a2m bm in fact we have a representation for each element of fq okay we don't know it we didn't do you, do you see that right fq is just an m dimensional vector space over fp how will you represent vectors m dimensional vector space over a field <coughs> you can use coordinate vectors okay suppose okay only thing i don't know is i don't know the basis right <laughs> i haven't told you what the basis is i don't know the basis but i can represent every vector as simply a coordinate vector i just won't be able to translate it into the actual vector but i will know what the coordinates are right just list out all the coordinates there are p power m possibilities right simply write it down okay and you can even add them okay only thing is you won't know what they actually are okay you will only know their coordinates okay so in in your in the vector spaces you are used to like r3 and all coordinate is everything right you don't care beyond that but this vector space coordinate is not everything so you don't you don't know the real elements the b1 and bm you don't know it you don't know it actually it turned out also very simple you can find that very easily but we don't know them yet but we can represent each element of fq as coordinates and in fact add them also there's no problem just add the coordinates individual coordinates are added modulo p okay so let's see that example right away okay suppose i say f16 okay i haven't told you if it exists or not suppose somebody tells you f16 exists okay then i can write f16 as what i can write it as 0000 0001 0010 0, 0, 1, 1, so on till what? 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay? And I, and I even know how to add. How will I add 0, 0, 1, 1 and 1, 1, 1, 1? Simple vector addition modulo 2. Yes, that's all. For instance, 0, 0, 1, 1 plus 1, 1, 1, 1 will be what? 1, 1, 0, 0. I know it belongs there. 
what is it that i cannot do in a field what else should i be able to do I should be able to multiply and i have no clue how to multiply because vector space will not take you anywhere as far as multiplication is concerned right multiplication how did i argue for multiplication i said i have to use the multiplication in fq i mean i mean i haven't defined what multiplication is that's the only other trick we have to add to this construction okay so we already know what f 2 power m or fp power m will look like it will be all coordinate vectors over fp and i also know how to add them okay the addition is also going to be the same as vector addition the only thing i don't know is how to multiply two elements of fq okay okay you don't think of multiplying two vectors but i mean it's the same how do you multiply two elements of fq how do how do you multiply these two to any two vectors in this okay so 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 hopefully you are convinced by now that finite fields are the simplest things in the world this is f16 okay. over uh, binary field yes. yeah f16 will have to be over f2 no right what will be the characteristic of f16 has to be 2 okay so right why why does it have to be 2 q has to be p power m where p is the characteristic okay so maybe i didn't write it down fq exists implies q is p power m where p is characteristic okay any q can be uniquely written as p power m if it has only one prime factor it will be very easily figured out so once i give you q you can find out what the characteristic will be also okay there's, so there's no f16 over f3 and f16 is nothing like that only for vector spaces you have since i've said it's already a field there is a more complicated multiplication once you define that you'll see it I mean it cannot be over arbitrary fields and all that. doesn't work okay so any questions on how this worked out okay all right okay so good so the next uh, thing we have to show is multiplication okay and for multiplication i will use i, I will i will basically what i'll do is i'll present the construction for fq for any q which is p power m and then i'll argue why the multiplication works okay but i want you to think back over fp okay if you had worried only about addition fn should have worked for any n okay multiplication was made possible why we were doing modulo p and p was prime. prime okay so we'll use a similar idea here we'll construct a set of objects modulo some other thing for which will make multiplication work okay so basically that's the next thing we'll do i'm dangerously close to the end of the period i think we have 10 more minutes i think i have time for doing this okay so let's do construction of fq okay i think i already wrote down construction of fq for q equals p power m p prime okay i know all these things now previously i didn't know i know all these things have to be true hmm fq cannot exist just by the same proof you can show that fq cannot exist Okay, I assumed I started assume I started with the assumption that FQ exists, and then I showed Q is P power M. So if Q is not P power M, obviously that cannot exist. No, any time it exists, you have to come to this Q equals P power. M. Okay, all right. So this is how you construct it. I'll I'll simply present the construction, and then I'll go back and appeal to this as well. Okay, so you can show FQ, which is defined as a of x in F P X. such that set of all polynomials in fpx such that degree of a of x is less than or equal to m minus 1 can be made to a, can be made into a field okay okay first of all some sanity check okay first of all does this set have p power m elements if i say set of all polynomials in fpx degree is less than or equal to m minus 1 it will have p power m elements okay that's the first check based on what i know about addition in fp if fq does that same thing work what if i add two polynomials what will i get is it the same as vector space addition yeah it's the same as vector space addition over the coefficient because these x powers are just place holders they're just telling you what to add and it's exactly like vector addition so both of those work okay so whatever i know about fq is not contradicted by the set et and the <coughs> polynomial addition operation so i can make the addition a simple polynomial addition
okay okay so for multiplication we need we need something prime right how did how did multiplication work the last time you did it modulo some prime number here we will need an irreducible polynomial of degree m okay so i'll start with pi of x being an irreducible polynomial irreducible in fpx degree equal to m okay why do i know such a polynomial will exist yeah i just gave you the result okay so it's true that for any m any degree m i'll have an irreducible polynomial pi of x i will define multiplication modulo polynomial multiplication modulo p of x pi of x that's all okay so what do i mean by modulo in polynomial things when i multiply two polynomials and if the degree is less than or equal to m minus 1 obviously the degree can be greater than m, right so if i take two polynomials from this field and multiply i can go outside how do i reduce it i'm going to say modulo pi of x what should i do when i do modulo pi of x i should divide by pi of x and take the remainder and the remainder will definitely have degree less than or equal to m minus 1 and it will belong here Okay, so this multiplication satisfies the closure property. Okay, you multiply any two, you will definitely come back to this field. There's no problem. Okay, but what's the crucial thing you have to check in finite field in field multiplication? Inverse. And inverse will exist by the same argument that I gave before. Okay, you simply take a polynomial and multiply by all other polynomials modulo pi of x. No two of them will be the same. Why? If any of them are the same, pi of x will have to be reducible. the same argument as before okay since that cannot happen no two of them have to be the same since all of them are distinct and you have exactly q of them one of them will have to be equal to 1 and that will be the inverse okay so there's no change in the proof okay so that's why i kept saying these polynomials are the same as integers in many ways okay whatever you did with integers you can do with these polynomials also you'll have these prime numbers as far as factorization is concerned they are very very similar okay so that's the proof i don't even have to write it down right all of you are convinced you're all shaking your head very vigorously okay right so it's a very easy proof the same proof will carry over as an fp okay just by the same proof this will work out okay so that's it that's the end of the construction just four lines okay who told you finite fields were difficult i don't know what they were saying right there are the simplest things in the world okay how do you construct any finite field simply take all polynomials of degree less than or equal to m minus 1 how do you add simple polynomial addition how do you multiply you find the irreducible find some irreducible polynomial of degree m you do modulo that's so it that's the basic basis elements are 0 or 1 x x plus exactly that can be a basis so now we can go back and find basis and anything else if you want okay so i know what the objects are i know what the vectors are so i can easily go back and find basis elements and all i'll come back to that and talk more okay all right so we'll stop here do more later